Hello everyone and welcome. Well, we have another victim on the bench today. This time it's a Ryobi 1600 PSI 1.2 GPM pressure washer and it doesn't want to work. Why? I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, so we have today the Ryobi 1600 PSI pressure washer and this baby doesn't want to work. I don't know why. I'll show you. I plug it in. You see here the connector has green meaning it's getting power. Turn it off, it goes off. Turn it on, it goes on. Power here at the head. Turn it on, we get nothing. On, off, on, off. Rocking the switch doesn't accomplish anything. It's dead as a doornail. Let's tear into it and see what's going on inside. Now I already tried the obvious. I thought maybe it had an air bubble and that was preventing the motor from spinning up. So I hooked it up to the hose, ran some water through it, went in just fine, went out just fine, so no air bubble inside the system. Tried rocking the switch a few times, nothing happening inside there. So either it's not getting power to the switch or it's not getting power to the motor. Somewhere in there, first things first, let's try the most obvious things. Let's see if it's getting power. So let's open this baby up and see what we got to work with. I've never taken one of these apart before, so this is the first time for me. that in a minute. Alright, what do we got here? Got a hose. Disconnect that for the time being. Ah. There we go. Get that out of there. Well, there's the pump, the switch for the pump. There's the motor itself, the pump right there, nicely covered up. In case you're wondering, I don't like using power tools for taking things apart because you can't feel what you're doing with a power tool and it's very, very easy to strip out one of these screws and then you've got a bigger problem on your hands. So I prefer to feel what's going on instead of just tearing into it with a power tool. They don't give you much room to work with stuff, do they? Everything is really tight and narrow in here. Wow. So we pull this back. <clears throat> oh my goodness.
be good if I could get that switch out of there because it's not giving me much room to work here. Let me pry this switch out. Be right back. So we got this out of there. Now, let's fiddle around with some wires and see what we got. Alrighty, let's do some simple diagnostic here. Let's see if we're getting power somewhere or not. Should have power on these two by now, right now, do we? No, we don't. Not by the look of it. Don't have any power there. Turn it on. That would help. Helps to turn things on. And we still have no power. Maybe the switch is faulty, which is one of the most common things to happen. The switch goes bad. That's very easy to rectify. Let's make sure there. Make sure I'm touching the leads. Yep, there's no power there at all, even though I'm touching the leads. Should be fairly simple, white and black. Okay, guys, so I took this further apart. I took the switch off because one of the common failure areas would be the switch. So the basic things when you're tearing stuff apart is look to see if power is getting into the unit and check the switch. Well, I checked the switch to see if it was switching. It was not. So then the next thing is to isolate it, take this off, and see is it getting power to begin with. It is not getting power. As you can see right here, I have these going into the power outlet. And you can see right here, the head unit, the, uh, I forget what these, the fault, uh, the circuit breaker here at the end. It's uh, for wet areas. Uh, this is a, I forget what it's called. I'll type it in later on when I edit this. But uh, fault circuit protector, something like that. In wet areas, you have one of these so that if something happens, it'll turn it off and not cause an electrical fire short, whatever. So this says that it's getting power but there's no power getting over here because if you trace the electrical cord going into the unit it comes over here it comes right here and there's nothing going on I have it plugged into the two power prongs coming into the unit no power this would be lit up red if it did have power so right now I'm thinking the fault uh, protector is bad so I may bypass this right now and see what we do let me uh, do some wire let me tear this apart and we'll be right back Okay, so we're in, and uh, I can take this further apart. You can see there's a lot of electronics in there and so forth, and I may take it apart, I may not. It's all wired up right here. It's held together right there. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to test to see if it's getting power right there. If, oh, man, this cord is so long and bulky, it's going to fall off. If it is not getting power right there, then that tells me that the electronics inside are no good. So then this unit will have to be swapped. And I'm sure I can probably get this on the internet or something and replace it. 
But for right now, the most important thing is to feed power to it to see if the unit actually works and if it's, this is the only problem. So, once again, it had security bits on it and I had to use a square, tiny, little, odd ball. It's, I guess it's a square. It's really, it was hard for me to find it. The Harbor Freight Tool Security Bit System uh, Kit came in handy again. When you're taking stuff apart, a lot of them put in these tiny little security bits. So, that came in handy once again. I like that. It comes in very, very useful. So, let's see what we have here. And let me see how I can hook this up and see if we can get power here. Let me move some stuff around. What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? I need to check to see if it's getting power right here. So, let me get some uh, wiring. Let me get some wiring so I can wire this up here and plug it in. Be right back. Alright, so all we're going to do here is tie these on to there so we can get a test going. And when you do this at home, be very careful. You don't want to electrocute yourself. Be very, very careful. Make sure what's plugged in, what's not plugged in. Keep the wires apart from each other. You definitely don't want them touching. This is only a temporary thing, obviously. This is not something you ever do on a permanent basis. You never want to have exposed wires, but we're just doing a test here. So that's all it's for, testing purposes. That way we can eliminate this quick and easy and know how to move forward. All right. So as you can see, I tied the two wires into there through the holes that are provided. And let's just, we're going to plug this in now, move this aside. Get some of the junk out of the way. And we're going to make sure this isn't dragging or causing me any problems. And let's see. Plug it in. We have it plugged in now. And let's see with our tester, are we getting any power? And the answer is no. I don't know if you can see that, but it is not lighting up. We're here. We do have power. You see it's lit up. So we're getting power to the fault protector, but we're not getting power out of the fault protector. So therefore the electronics are definitely bad in there. So this needs to be replaced. So I will do that, but for the time being, let's check to see if this unit is any good. Did this cause any further problems or is this the only problem? And let's put this back together. I'm going to put this back together and I'm going to tear this apart and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so we're back. So what I did was I disconnected the ground fault protector, took it off completely, took the wiring off of here. Since we know this is defective, this will need to be replaced. And I hooked it straight onto the cord. I'm going to use my test lead again. I taped up one end so we don't have anything moving around and possibly causing a spark. And I put the switch back on. Hopefully I remembered how to do it correctly. If not, I'll find out for sure real quick. And let's put it on the on side so I can control the current faster, better, easier. Let's plug this in and let's see if this beast will turn on. So let's hope we don't get any sparks or problems right now. And here we go. Nothing. Maybe I wired it wrong. And there she goes. She's alive. I wired it backwards. I'll have to turn that switch around. But it works. So that tells you right there. It was just the ground fault protector. The pump itself is good. So I'm going to spare you all the uh, watching this long thing being put back together. I'm going to put it back together. For the time being, proof of concept, I'm just going to leave it with a test lead until I purchase one of these and then I will install another fault protector and uh, I'm going to put it back together and show you how it finally works and now we know what the problem is. Be right back. Okay everybody and we're back for the big reveal. As you see I put it all back together. Hands are really dirty from tearing into all this but 
Mission accomplished. We got the job taken care of. The culprit was the ground fault protector. This needs to be replaced. I'm going to get on the computer and order one off eBay or something like that. These are probably generic. I don't think there's anything special about this. Don't need to get it from Ryobi and pay a fortune. Get some cheap one. Just proof of concept. You can see right here I wired in a test lead just for the time being. Just to prove to you guys that everything is back together and everything works properly. Obviously this is not the safe way to do it. And I don't intend to keep it this way. Oh, by the way, before we continue and finish up this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I need more subscribers so I can keep doing projects like this to keep you guys entertained. So be sure to click that subscribe button right now and ring that bell so you get notified every time I put out another video. If you like me tearing into stuff and fixing it or just tearing it apart, you're going to enjoy the buy videos. So be sure to like and subscribe and let's get going. Here's the plug. I'm going to plug it in right now. It is off. Everything should be fine. We're off right now. We're plugged in. Will it work? As you can see, it works like brand new. I'm not going to run it dry because it's not good for the water pump to be without water inside. These machines are made to run with water, which is what keeps it cool and lubricated. So, we'll order one of these, put this back on here, and this baby will be good as new. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, like and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye for now.